we just arrived to Ikea and we're gonna go in there. Yeah. Don't worry, she was in her car seat before we parked. Um, but anyways, we're gonna go inside. We're gonna see what they've got new inside the store. But what I'm really after is the Kelix storage system, which I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of Ikea Kelix uh hacks but i am going to be doing one myself and i'm super excited to share that idea with you it did say that they had some in stock here yeah. at the houston location so i'm hoping that that's true and that it wasn't a mix-up because i just drove an hour to go get it so let's go ahead and go inside and go get what we need I've been working on a mood board for my future office slash guest bedroom and this apothecary cabinet is what inspired this IKEA hack. The next morning I went ahead and put the cubby system together following the instructions it came with. <laughs> Before we dive too deep into this project, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. You guys have heard me talk about Skillshare before because I truly enjoy utilizing their site for me to find new ways to continue to learn, grow, and connect through creativity. For those of you who haven't heard, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. It's a place to get inspired, learn new skills, or even enhance your current skills. I first discovered Skillshare over three months ago and at that time to classes offered by Mike Farty and Michael Carter Napricorn on productivity habits and time management. Since then, I've dived into a couple of other classes offered by Ali Abdul, like how to organize your workflow to maximize productivity. I'm really excited to continue to learn how I can maximize my time and energy by being more productive and in balancing everyday tasks. I'm enjoying putting what I've learned into action and seeing how helpful it has been for me. So let 2022 be the year you invest in yourself and your personal growth with the help of Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description of this video will get a one month free trial. I decided to cut a small amount at the bottom to have a clean edge of my plywood since it got dinged up. Of course, you can take your dimensions and have the big box store cut them for you instead. I am using half inch sanded plywood since it's cheaper, but you could also use cabinet grade plywood like maple or birch or even use three quarters as opposed to half inch. Wood prices have gone back up in my area, so I wanted to do a more budget friendly option. I used my table saw to get the right size after having a more manageable piece, but again, it's not necessary. Since this is plywood, I wanted to cover the exposed edges, so I used some iron-on edge banding veneer. I remove the excess using a blade. The next step was to start creating my full drawers. I've done this technique in the past and shared that here on my YouTube channel. If you haven't checked that video out, I'll have it in the description if you're interested. I marked and drew a line down the middle of both of the doors and then marked 8 inches down and marked my lines going across for the top bigger drawers. The drawers right under the first two were going to be smaller in size, so I marked them to be 4 inches in width, which gave me a total of one pair of large drawers on the top, followed by five pairs of smaller drawers for each door. I used a guide in my straight router bit with my router to create the separation of each full drawer.
Once all the lines were made, I moved on to sanding everything smooth with my orbital sander in 120 grit followed by 220 with a sanding sponge to get in between each groove and the orbital sander as well. While I had the orbital sander out, I moved on to sanding the cubby system with 120 grit. Next, it was time to add height to this storage. So I had some leftover 2x2s I had made from my previous project from a 2x6 scrap piece. So I measured and cut those to size. Because I'm using a scrap wood, the longest piece didn't actually cover the entire bottom of the cubbies, but I was completely okay with that. I cut the two front legs at an angle and the back two, I cut them straight. I sanded everything smooth with 120 followed by 220 and created pocket holes on my longer pieces that would be going between the legs. I made sure to clean and wipe off any excess dust and began applying some pre-stain wood conditioner. Instructions suggested to wait 30 minutes before applying the stain, so I moved on to the cubbies. because it's extremely windy outside and I don't want the primer to just spray everywhere and not go where I want it to go. I'm gonna be using Kills primer. I'm using it in a can just because I honestly don't feel like rolling it. <laughs> um, you could definitely roll it. I have um, the Ben Shellac primer that you guys usually see me use. That's actually uh, in a shellac based, um, oil based primer as well. So, this is made of particle board, so the slick surface that they create on here is really hard to get stuff to stick to it if you don't prep it and prime it correctly, like sanding it, make sure it's clean, and then priming correctly before applying your paint. If you just go directly with paint over it, it's not going to adhere very, very well. So I'm going to go ahead and do one coat, lightly sand, do a second coat, and then we'll be ready for paint. While I waited on the first coat of primer to dry, I came back and stained the new legs. I am using Rust-Oleum in the color Early American. Unfortunately, the color I am using is an oops paint from Lowe's and they do not provide the original color information since they alter the color once it's been returned. Apparently, it's to help prevent people from returning it and then going back and getting it for cheaper. I do, however, have the Data Color Easy Reader that provides color matches, so I'll leave those down in the description for those of you who are interested. 
I didn't have a lot of paint left since I used it for another personal project so I didn't want to add the paint with just foam roller because they usually tend to soak up a lot of paint so instead I applied it with a brush and then lightly rolled it over to decrease the brush strokes. I did two coats with a light sand in between using 320 grit. I applied the legs to the bottom base using 2 inch screws and making sure it was perfectly centered. I drilled a pilot hole before inserting the screw to prevent any splitting. On one of the door fronts, I accidentally went off course and had to fill in a couple of small gaps to keep the line straight. I taped off where I would be painting and applied pre-stain conditioner, waited 30 minutes, then stained them using the same early American color I used for the legs. I sealed the two chopped drawers with the Kills original primer and then applied two coats of the same paint used on the cubbies. To seal everything, I am using a satin polyurethane. And no, you don't have to spray it, you could easily apply this with a good brush or a sponge. I added my hinges, attached the doors, and then began adding all of my hardware.
Now let's remember what we started with. And what it looks like now. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future DIY projects. I picked out a couple of other videos you may also enjoy. Be kind and I'll see y'all next week. Bye!